G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is the Arc Welder. This is a barely customizable standalone heavy weapon made from vanilla weapon parts. So let's go ahead before we customize this thing. We'll play name that part. Starting off from this side, that appears to be a Bunsen burner on the front, made from a MISC uh, part there. That's a Gorse Rifle Compensator. Not really sure about this area, but this is definitely a barrel for the junk jet. I, no, not the junk jet. Yes, the junk jet. Of course it is. This handle right here is the ammo lever for your Gatling laser. And coming towards the back, I believe this is from the minigun here. And I'm actually not too sure about what this handle is from, but yes. Look at this thing, this is a brilliant use of just um, stuff that is already in the game, just reformed and reshaped to create something standalone and whatever it is, it's awesome. It's not quite the arc welder that we got from Fallout New Vegas, but this is something new entirely, so there's a little bit of uh, creation um, points, not creation club, but creative points, I probably should have said that first, but anyways, looks pretty awesome, I do like how it has glow maps, moving into the attachments, we've got the fast barrel on now, which will improve our damage and rate of fire at the cost of some range and accuracy. There's the slow barrel for comparison. So it looks like we'll be getting better DPS but smaller damage per shot out of that, which is unfortunate, but whatever. You can't do anything with the sights. I don't even know why there's a little attachment point for it. So we'll move on from that. And you can change its ammo source. So the fusion cells, we're going to be eating them up very, very quickly. I've only got 1,100 of those. Fusion cores will actually give you a little bit better damage, but reduce the range a bit. No, reduce the fire rate. The range is untouched. Hmm, increase damage and reduce spread. Alright, looks like that lines up for what the numbers are showing me. So that's our arc wider. Let's take it into Gunner's Plaza and roast some people. Righto, so here we are in Gunner's Plaza with our arc wider. That's what it looks like in first person. Aiming down sights is basically the same as the minigun, as we're using the minigun animations. And upon inspecting what this weapon looks like in New Vegas, this thing is actually closer to the mark than what I originally thought, which is great. All of the greebling from the vanilla parts really serves this thing well. That's also what we look like in third person. Now, if you're actually using welding equipment, you want to actually put on the proper PPE, that is personal protective equipment, this is probably not right. So, um, it's unfortunate, or it is fortunate, that the sole survivor, in this case Bridget, has some Wolverine healing powers because she's going to need it because, man, this would be like sitting next to the sun with the UV rays. Also, um, the arc would be very, very bright, so much that you could probably blind yourself very easily. But as you can tell, we're doing a good amount of damage with this thing. Now, unlike regular bullet shooting or laser shooting, if you're talking about the Gatling laser, heavy weapons in this game, um, the electric arcs between people and um, doesn't arc on you, which is always good news. Um, maybe you've got some sort of thing attached to the ground. I really don't know. Maybe this thing is insulated. Anyways, so uh, yeah, when we kill people, uh, when we hit people, we can actually get that arc bouncing from them to another thing or another turret. I like how it's more um, keen to get onto the turrets because they're actually made of metal than it is people, although that might have just been a little bit of um, stuff from an RNG, although it was arcing from ages away just then. It'd be nice if the Tesla rifle projectiles, which is what this thing fires, actually um, would prefer to go on metal objects and robots instead of the people, but I'm guessing that was just some um, just standard Fallout 4 being weird type thing. So even in VATS, this thing can absolutely kick ass, which is great. I'm having no problems with this thing's damage, and we've got a plenty of fusion cores in our inventory to keep this thing running, which is great. Getting um, nuclear physicist 1 and 2, along with the repair bowl head, means you can basically get, like, what is it, 100 and something percent? A little bit over 100 percent um, efficiency with your... Um, fusion cores compared to actually using it without those perks so yeah you can make this thing pretty much fire endlessly and fusion cores you can fire them on Cleo's shop and at least four or five of them at once so y yeah you can keep this thing running for ages if you want to so yeah looks like we've actually got a decent heavy weapon here it's kind of interesting how they didn't go for a heavy weapon approach with a tesla rifle in the automatron dlc but who knows oh yeah some indirect fire with arcing electricity awesome Awesome stuff. Okay, so we're going to go stand outside and let our UV rays repair our damaged body. Although if it's UV rays that solar powered works off, I'm guessing this thing would actually kind of heal you. Kind of like how gamma radiation heals ghouls, but yeah. 
Um, solar power doesn't make a lot of sense, but what does make a lot of sense to me is this thing is awesome. Alright, we'll move on to something else, and I don't think sneaking is really in the question for this weapon because it's big, it shoots giant arcs of electricity, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Righto, so here we are outside of Cutler Bend. Basically, we'll find a high-level Milex here, and for some reason my barrel is glowing despite putting this thing away. That's kind of weird. Anyways, oh, it looks like we've got a Rust Devil... Um, little group here, so we'll go ahead and clean them out quickly. Let's avoid this pile of uh, oil here and see what we can do with some sneak attack criticals. Well, we can get sneak attack criticals, but as you can tell with the arcing electricity, and I think the sound's glitched. Yep, the sound. Yeah, the sound glitched for a second, but that's okay. I fixed it by going into my pit boy, so yeah, be aware of that glitch. But yes, as you can tell, this weapon does have very nice crowd control properties inherent off its projectile being from the Tesla rifle. It also appears to be semi-decent at killing all of the Mylurk baby eggs, so you don't have to deal with those bastards coming at you um, after you've walked past them. Although, since the projectiles arc, you could probably wait until all three of the buggers that usually spawn in from a clutch to be there, and just tap the trigger, and that'll roast them all. Okay, so we're going pretty well at the moment. These aren't a particularly high level Mylurks, but you know what, I'm going to roast some fishies with this. Now interestingly, this weapon doesn't have anything to do with actual real life arc welding. I've done that before, it's actually kind of cool. Um, but yeah, when you arc weld in real life, you've got like your, your inverter generator thingy attached to some sort of thing. Oi, bugger off. Do you try to go invisible? No, that was only... S that's just the poison effect on me. Um, but yeah, when you actually weld, like, I like to call it stick welding, because you stick an electrode in some sort of handle thing, and then you just, um, you know, go across with the electrode, and then you weld the metals together. It actually is really hot, too. It's like 6,000 degrees worth of heat, so you, you know that steel is going to fuse together, or whatever metal you are welding. So yeah, that's kind of cool. And, um... I see no need for an arc welder to be of this side, not only as it is it really unwieldy, it's going to be heavy, so getting precise welds on stuff is going to be super hard, so I'm not even sure what the hell this weapon is even for. Um, a lot of the weapons from the, um, what's it called, the Lonesome Road DLC did have some industrial sort of, um, I guess design to it, like the industrial hand, it was basically a power fist with a big old saw on the back which you could hold out in front of you, kind of like a ripper but even better. But yeah, I don't really see the point in having a giant ass welder like this. Maybe it was a way for them to use all of the ECPs, all of those electron charge packs. I don't really know. Or maybe it was just something that the developers threw together but didn't really have an understanding of what the hell they were actually talking about. Or maybe there's something I am missing, but I think we'll finish this up by roasting some blood bugs as well. Not blood bugs, sting wings. Ah yes, the the virgin stingwings. Nothing like the Chad Cazadors out there, I'll tell you that much. There's usually one more in here. I remember this one being quite a higher level. He should be a chaser. No, he's only a data. Too bad for him, now he is dead. And the barrel is cooled down from probably not shooting the thing, but I'd like to think that the weather um, had the rain has sort of cooled the barrel down as we uh, finish up here. So yeah, as you can tell from this thing, it does a good job. It does good damage. Got good, um, you know, crowd control properties. Forgot what I was about to say there for a second, but yeah, it seems to be a solid weapon all around and an actual fairly decently damaging heavy weapon. It doesn't really fit into Fallout 4 that way though, because usually heavy weapons are pretty terrible in this game. I'll put it away, Bridget, if it's heavy. Alright, we'll move on. Okay, there's a giant Wendigo ghoul over there. Let's go and toast him. Now, if I had a mod that would make my eyes glow red like Emperor Palpatine's eyes, I'd definitely do that right now, and I'd make a joke about being Emperor Palpatine again after I've killed this ghoul, but um, whether I can kill it remains to be seen. Looks like we can stagger it, though, thanks to Heavy Gunner there, so that works. Well, I'm just going to keep on critting until this guy is out of our way. He didn't go into a dive there, and he's about to hit us again. Okay, we got him staggered there, which was lucky. I had no idea that we'd actually get him staggered, so that's nice. 
All right, we're in uh, Nerd Rage now. This is our time to do damage if there ever was. And he's going in for the dive. We'll go ahead and crit him with that. Wow, he's not really committed to doing the dives there. Maybe it was just... Maybe he's too big and the dive animations don't usually work. But as you can tell, we're not doing great damage here. And uh, we're about to get killed probably, so... Yep, here, here he comes. We got a gunner down, we got a gunner down. Okay, we'll go again in the daytime this time, but this time we've got reinforcements, you see. Everyone's got an arc welder. That's right, we've called him in, we've called in the angels, and uh, we'll see how we go here. The yeah, you get him, Iris. Whatever you say, Iris, whatever you say. Okay, I think that's a little bit overkill, but um, we all made it. I think Winter and Ella got um, killed, but sure, we, we definitely made it. Okay, we killed that monster very quickly. We might as well go and face another, yeah? Okay, so here we are outside of Vault 111, and it is time to take on the most terrifying rad roach in all history. Where is Rogezilla? Okay, there he is. He's friendly now, but he won't be for very long. Ooh, we've got barrel glow even though the barrel's not glowing. Nice, okay. Well, I'm gonna try to jump on these crates and hopefully we can get there before, you know... Okay, now we're fine. Let's go ahead and get stuck into Mr. Rochi and see how we go. Yes, that very valuable sneak attack critical. Fool, you're a fool of a rad roach. I am in command of the most powerful army of whatever they are. Of angels the world of Fallout has ever known. Not even Hrothgar could top this goodness. I don't have to lift a finger. Sick em, girls. Sick em. Good Good riddance indeed, Bridget. I think she got the killing blow. That's why she said it. And I think that is about enough from the arc welder. Oh, so that car's going to explode. You might want to get away from that. Oh, God. Good job. You might want to, you know, revive him, Winter, or you're just going to let him down there. It's their own fault, isn't it? Anyways, so if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. I know for a fact that it is on PC, whether it's on Xbox or any console ports. Um, I'll link in the description if they're there, but I'm not actually sure at this point of recording that they are. So if you'd like to see it in your game, check out the links in the description. These companions are a thing for all platforms to grab them if you want. In the description they shall be. Alright, that's about enough. Thank you for watching, guys.